Well, hello everyone. It is Caitlin, and today, instead of sewing, we're going to do a sewing room tour. So we're going to take a look at all the areas in the sewing room and talk about every little piece and how I organize things. So welcome to the sewing room. Um, and with Lady, because she's sitting on the floor. Oh, I called your name. I'm sorry. So let's walk in. So when we walk in, this is basically what we see. So that, I'm sorry, the lighting's a little weird because of the window. But yeah, we're going to go section by section and I'm going to show you exactly what goes into each and every little section of the sewing room. So yeah, let's get started. Alright, here is part one. This is where I do all my filming. Um, so you probably recognize the green cutting board table. So uh, essentially my table is, is, is quite long. I went to Ikea and got some of those folding dining room tables. I got the white one. There's a black one and a white one. The black one is wider but shorter and this one was um, a little narrower but it was longer. So that's what I went with um, as far as mine. And then I just bought some really nice cutting board from um, Joann's and glued it on top really with like spray adhesive. And then I'm using an X-Acto knife, and I'll go a little closer, and put the camera down, to cut right along this edge, and so it can go, it can fold up and down. So both pieces actually do fold up and down. I did two of them, so I have like a two yard long cutting table. Usually I work on one, and I um, store on this side. So you don't usually get to see this side. This side is usually covered in fabric and projects and all the mess. So you think I have a really nice clean sewing room all the time, but really it's just piled up on this table because I'm lazy and I don't put things away. So usually I'll see this one, but yeah, it's just a cutting board and I cut it and it works and um, I do like it because it has a little ledge here. So I can still keep projects and stuff on the ledge, even if I wanted to put this down and have more space say, on the floor or something. Um, this is new. I just put this up a couple days ago. I am notorious for losing my scissors. You can see how many scissors I have. I have more. There's more in the cabinet and there's more in the kitchen. Um, but yeah, I can never find the scissors that I want. So they get lost on the table, mostly underneath fabric. So I thought if I had somewhere to hang them, that was convenient. Maybe I wouldn't lose them so often. So enter the coat rack. I bought it off a Hobby Lobby and I think it was $18 because it was on sale. So yeah, it works really well. And I kind of have them sectioned off with like my um, nice fabric cutting scissors and then like my thread scissors and my paper scissors. Those are more fabric scissors, but I don't use those very often so they got put something else. They got put, you know, off to the wayside. I also have my little straight edge that I use a lot um, when drafting and cutting. Um, here are my antique pinking shears, modern pinking shears, and then cords to charge things because I don't know how many times... I always lose these and um, then the camera dies and I have to like, pause filming and that sort of thing. So how many times have I, you know, like, we've been doing something and then you see me from another angle because I'm trying to charge the camera because I forgot to charge the camera. It's usually because I can't find the charging cord, so that's that. On top of the shelf, I just bought a new lamp. The lighting at night here is awful, so I'm hoping a little bit of natural light, like a sunlight will help with that. So um, yeah, I also got one that holds pens, so all my drafting tools are just right there. I don't know why I've always kept them in the sewing cabinet because I don't use them over there, I use them here. So it just makes sense to have them here. I have a little bit of thread here. Um, also the remote for the camera that I use to film, and that sort of thing. Um, I keep one measuring tape here um, the rest of them are in the sewing cabinet because I have a lot. And then further up, which y'all don't ever get to see, are my little clock, little peacock clock. It lets me know how much time I'm in here cutting things out and sewing. Um, and also when it's time to go to bed because sometimes I'll be here until late, 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 late. And I'll look up and go, oh wait, it's midnight. I have school tomorrow. I should probably go to bed. But yeah, that's essentially this little corner. I do have my little pin container here, which is really just a plate. And then I, let me see if I can do this without dropping any pins, I put magnets on the bottom. And so, yeah, I just bought new pins. 
because the ones I had, the yellow ones, were getting dull and they wouldn't go through silk anymore and y'all know I mostly work with silk so that was not okay. So I bought some glass head pins, bought the plastic ones. I also keep my thimbles in there and at least one needle attached to some thread. So that is this corner of the room um, where I do most of my work and most of my filming. And as we move across the corner, there's my modern printer. Um, I'm a teacher in real life, so yes, I do do a lot of printing. There's all my paper, but down there. And of course, windows, lots of windows. And we move across over to this corner, which I'll usually see in videos. But basically, it's where I keep my ironing board with its cover that I made myself to kind of match my decor with the peacocks. And then the dress form, who by the way, has a name. Her name is Edith. But yes, that is Edith. She usually, um, sometimes she's naked, but usually I try to put an original on her. Um, I try to get my originals out to kind of just make sure I'm touching them and making sure that they're not, you know, staying flat and getting creases in them. So I take them out periodically and I'll put them up for, you know, a week or two and then I'll go put it back and find a new one. Uh, trying to get them out, get them moving, making sure that there's nothing going on with them and nothing's hurting them. It's just kind of a good practice for me to know what I'm doing with them. So now I have an later 1860s bodice on there that is all trimmed with pearls. It's fun. Um, but that's what's on Edith today. Up here is where my iron goes and my starch and my water. And over on top is a little plant that has albino peacock feathers in it. We had, it wasn't really neighbor, it was on my, from my house to my parents' house, there's a place that has peacocks. Their albino one got hit by a car and um, died, and they just left the body out there, because I passed it like three days in a row and no one ever came to collect feathers or anything, so I didn't feel bad at that point stopping and gathering albino peacock feathers. So that's that kind of weird story. But other than that, the only other thing in this corner is my little trash can that holds all the junk whenever I get done with it, uh, scraps and that sort of thing. So we get to go move on to the sewing cabinet now. And this is my sewing desk, which um, you'll probably see a lot um, with the unboxing videos and then anytime I'm in costumes, this is usually where I'm standing. So like there up there is where my little thing is. And there's the actual sewing cabinet chest thing. So. Um, yeah, I just recently added one or really one thing to the top of this, which is um, the lovely little, it's really a twine holder over in the corner. Um, it holds my piping thread now because um, I had a, I was having a hard time getting that in and out and having the ball like fall everywhere. So I thought something where it can just kind of spin around is going to be useful and having scissors right there would be great. I think it looks really good there. So yeah, my piping cord is there. My sewing machine is late. 1930s from what I can tell. It looks earlier, but um, when I've done the research on it, everything this everything says like 18, 1937 to 1939. Um, but it goes with the decor in my room with what looks like peacock leaves. So yeah, it is a hand crank machine. Um, I do use it quite frequently simply because it's there and I don't have to plug it in or worry about plugs and that sort of thing. So um, my grandmother gave it to me actually. She, um, a relative had found it and gave it to her and she never used it and she knows I like old machines so she handed it to me which was very sweet so I do actually use it frequently um, and then over in the corner something else from my grandmother's house it just kind of matches the decor it's a little lamp sometimes I use it for light but um, the chest itself was given to me or the cabinet itself was given to me by my mom years and years ago as a sewing table and so it's gotten a lot of use out of it you all probably don't see the bottom of it very much but yeah, that's basically it. It's kind of worn over at the bottom, but there's like cabinets in there. So inside, we open up both tables, both parts here. It has all sorts of things. So on this side, I keep my threads, some modern threads right now. I'm hoping to just make that my, where I put my silk threads. That's where, really what I want there. Um, but all the stuff on the bottom row is silk thread. And some of the stuff on top is silk as well. Um, and then, of course, in the cabinet, I have my modern sewing machine, which is a baby lock. And then I have uh, my 1830 sewing chest down on the bottom that we did together. And a little tiny sewing chest here. I really don't know what's in there right now. I'm pretty sure it's stuff to work on the Elytra dress, um, which is 
the beetle wing embroidery dress, which y'all actually don't know about yet. Project that's been in the works for like five years now. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have all the stuff in there that I should keep um, for that. But eventually we're going to work on that. Behind it is my little pinking machine that uh, does little scalps for my parasols. And I have a smoking cleaner in there as well. Um, but this is fun. This actually all comes out. And I have extra space. And it's kind of all dusty because I rarely use it. But if I had stuff all over the cabinet, I could just pull my sewing machine here. And I have space up here to do stuff too. So that's always really nice to have that extra little pull out. And let's talk about the drawers. I just reorganized them. I'll move y'all a little closer so you can see. Alright, so this is drawer number one. So I have a little silicone um, ice tray here that I keep all my modern bobbins in. Um, and then this is all my cotton thread and a little bit of silk thread back here um, that I couldn't fit over on the other one because all the modern thread. But basically, this is all I usually use for sewing. I have red here for some reason. I don't even know why because um, I don't ever use it. But um, most of what I do is black, white, and gray because it just blends in with everything I do. Um, sometimes I use brown, but very rarely. Um, and then I have over here, which really should be there. I'm missing it right now because I'm using it. I was using it for a project, but I have a little leather needle case. It has all my needles in it. All the needles, they get stuck sometimes. I use a lot of needles. And it just kind of sits in here. Eventually I want to do one where I embroider on the leather with like my initials or something, or just say needles. And then I'm going to do like really nice hand embroidery on each layer to say exactly what needles they are, because I just kind of know. But it'd be nice, you know, just to have it labeled in there and then like have a little decorative stitching on the edges and, you know, all that. So eventually I'm going to redo this, but um, that's the way it is right now. I do have a needle case, which I never use, but it's in there. And some beeswax. Back in the corner, I have machine needles and then like safety pins back there, which I, again, never use, but I have so many of them and I feel bad burning them out. So this is all hooks and eyes here. I have this little thing hooks and eyes. And there's more back there. So lots of hooks and eyes. And then this is where I keep all my chalk. So you know when I mark things and all that. So that is drawer number one, which is probably the drawer I use most often. But further down, this is, I don't want to say a junk drawer. It ha has a purpose. So a lot of my silk buttonhole thread goes here. Eventually, again, I would like to put it on the door. It's just not there yet. But there's that. I have my rotary cutter. I have um, cases for scissors, I have my scissor sharpener, all of my tape measures, actually not even all of them because there's a couple of them I'm using right now, but um, the vast majority of my tape measures are there. I have extra pens, pencils, um, just some, you know, flash drives, note paper, these are extra, um, these are the scallop ones for the rotary cutter. So yeah, that's that part. And then the final door, which I actually don't use very often, but it has all my modern sewing machine feet. So I have like, I don't know, 50 feet. And then I also have, you know, what all my machines to just do. There's modern buttons in here. So this little container here actually houses mostly buttons. I have a side for period buttons and a side for modern buttons. And then there's um, like all my sewing machine Stuff. So like my manuals and my cleaning tools and stuff that I use for the sewing machines down here. I will rarely use this stuff, so it kind of just stays in there. It's nice and organized in this little container, which I can pull, pull out and show you. But yeah, it just kind of looks like this. Um, and then there's like modern buttons and I think period buttons, yep. Oh yeah, and also my, my grommet making tools. That's in here too. So... It keeps everything nice and organized because prior to having this, it was all it was basically a junk drawer, and so it's nice having everything organized and where my buttons don't fall out and make a mess because that used to happen. But that is essentially my sewing drawer itself. Real quick before we get to the closet, we're going to talk about this side of the corner. So there's my chair that is all torn up because the cat likes to scratch on it. But um, up there is where I do keep a lot of books. You'll see there, there's a sat iron and a little um, stand for the sat iron. Books, I have two copies of Making Heirloom Buttons. I have um, a shawl book written by Anna Warden Bowersmith. 
there's the Art of Fashion in there, there's Civil War Ladies, um, some modern stuff in there too, like how, like making heirloom sewing stuff. There's a 1860s and 1850s hairstyles from Godey's book in there. There's a Dressmaker's Guide by Elizabeth Clark and a Workwoman's Guide. Some knitting books, uh, modern, you know, kid sewing stuff. So I do make a lot of like heirloom baby stuff for like friends and things. Old quilt patterns, which I don't actually quilt, but I have the book. And then um, historic color names for fabric, which is kind of a fun book to read. There is, um, this whole thing is actually a um, sewing manual for my 1907 treadle. That was my great grandmother's. And then I actually did for a while, and I would like to get back to it eventually, reproducing Godey's Ladies Book. So these are actually reproduction books. And they're made just like the originals, and I even cleaned them up inside. Hey look, there's the mantle I'm actually working on today. Oh fun! Look at that. That was totally random. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so it, they're actually completely reproducible. One day I would like to like do that for fun and just for people at events who need goatees. Yeah, I haven't quite figured out the fashion plate yet. I can't get that quite right yet. But other than that, they're actually really good re and faithful reproductions. I used to own all the, all of the goatees from 1850 to 1865. I no longer have the originals, but um, yeah, I took detailed notes and copies from all of them, and I have them. All, I have all of them filed. So one day I'd like to get back to that. That was a lot of fun. But uh, that's essentially the book cabinet. Um, up there, there's a little doll there, uh, my family's check, and that's actually what our ancestors would wear. So my grandmother got that um, probably back in the early 90s or 80s, and she gave it to me. And back behind it is the very first piece of sewing I ever did in my life. I was probably seven or eight. I was taking a, so I was homeschooled my whole life, and um, we had a co-op, and some wonderful lady did a American Girl Felicity co-op class, um, learning like dancing and all the fun things that Felicity learned and talked about in the books. And so we had to make a sampler and that's the very first sewing I've ever done in my life. And so yes, it is there. It looks awful. I didn't know what I was doing, but it was fun and it kind of started me on this journey. So it, is, it sits there. That is what that is all up there. So now we can get to the closet. Closet. So um, yeah, it's very plain. I kind of like it plain because you see it on the videos and I don't really want anything there necessarily. But we opened it up and I just reorganized everything so it looks really nice. So like further up there, that's where all my patterns are. So I have this, my 1830 to 1865 pattern and it's all organized so I have like, they're in file folders. And so I have a file folder for like 1830s bodice patterns and then 1830 sleeves is another one, 1830s pelerines is another one, 1860 bodice is there, um, 1860 sleeves, I think I had this separated into like evening sleeves and day sleeves, uh, all the accessories, anything that goes in that uh, time period goes there, and then I have other errors pattern, which is mostly my modern stuff. For some reason I have patterns for Regency stuff, which I've never done in my life and don't remember having plans to do, um, but I have patterns, so interesting. But it's there, um, I'll organize back there. Further in the back I have like my modern yarn and stuff, so that's just like there. But further down, we have um, my fabric. So each of these, you can kind of see the label. So I have silk dress links. So all across the top there are dress links. So it's silk, and then there's wool, and then there's cotton. And then on the bottom is the what I call project links. So they're not dress links. I can't make a dress out of them. But they're not scraps. Like, I can do stuff with them. So I can make a hood with it. I could um, line a sewing box. Really anything that's less than five yards but greater than a yard goes into project links right there. And so I have silk project links right underneath the silk dress links. And then a uh, cotton and wool project links go underneath the wool. And then on the other side, we'll see in a second, is my um, lining fabrics. And then over in the corner, I'll move you a little closer. Over in the corner, really the corner is kind of stuffed with my sewing machine covers uh, for, the eight, for the 1930s one and also for the modern one. I have a little antique sewing chest. And then a little colorful thing, which I've had forever. And right now, I'm pretty sure there's a Victorian, it's an original one. I have it you know, wrapped in acid free tissue paper, but um, Orange Blossom Tiara for a wedding. Don't know why I have it, but I do. And if I ever get married, 
I'm going to fix it up. But um, that's, in, that's in there. And I kind of keep it contained in there and it's wrapped in acid-free tissue paper. And I check it out every once in a while just to make sure it's, you know, okay. But it's just sits there. Further down, over in the corner, there is modern dress links. So like all my modern clothes, all the fabric fits in there. There's white cotton in here. Uh, more modern fabric down in the corner. They're in the corner because I can't really reach in that corner very well. And I rarely do modern stuff. So it's there. And then furthest down, that's where all my yarn and needlework stuff goes. Um, and then in this corner, there is like my fine cottons and my nets go in that one. And then my millinery and corset goes in the bottom. Fabric for corsets, my flowers for millinery, all that goes in the very bottom one. So let me move this around. And we'll talk about this side. So there's my cotton dress links there, like we talked about. Lining fabrics. This is one where it, I call it in process projects. So all the stuff that I had planned to do for an event and I got cut out and started, but then I had to prioritize because my grandiose plans were much grander than what the time allowed prior to an event. And then I didn't need them after the, after the event. And so they got stuck in there. Uh, so it is quite full. And there's like handkerchiefs and lace and collars I need to make up and there's a mess in there I need to make up. Dresses. I don't even know what's all in there. Okay, it's just full. One day we're going to go through it. And then further down there is like trim and miscellaneous stuff, but mostly it's trim, like fringe and braid and some velvet ribbon that didn't fit on my ribbon container. But yeah, that's all that. Further in the corner, there is a old hand quilting frame that I got from my grandmother and a lap frame that has embroidery on it that I've never started. And then there's my 1860s sewing basket, which also has, you know, my sewing chest for 1860s that I need to redo. We'll do that eventually. And also some filming stuff stays in there. Um, underneath, there's like my leather and fur stuff and my feather stuff. So like all my down that I stuff things with, my leather, shoe making supplies that, you know, usually is what I do with leather fur bits, all that goes into there. And on the very bottom is batting. Um, and in the very corner, move it over. It's hard to see, but there's like paper and um, drafting stuff and pattern making paper, that sort of thing. There's a whole box for parasol making stuff. So you can like see my ribs, you know, hanging out of there, but you know, that's that. And then there's also, I call it mending, but really it's miscellaneous crafts and modern stuff. That I don't ever touch, but I have. So, yeah, that's duct tape and I don't even know what. I think there's a label maker in there, which I think is what the wires are hanging out. Um, paints, brushes, that sort of thing. That all goes in there. It's called mending. It's supposed to be a mending box, and I need to relabel it. I just haven't gotten to it yet. But that is essentially the closet. This is where I keep my ribbons and laces. So it's just a thread holder that I put on the wall. And I got some wooden spools and I put lace and ribbons on it. So my really, really wide ribbons wouldn't fit. So they're in the miscellaneous crafts bucket with all my other trim. But anything that was like two inches wide and narrower, I could fit here. So this is like all my two inch wide ribbon, one inch wide ribbon, half inch wide ribbon, or three quarters inch wide, some of them. And my quarter and eighth inch ribbon goes here. I won this free because I didn't have enough stuff for it. And then all my laces. So like this is um, antique, um, what's it called, Maltese lace. This is Maltese lace. I have black lace and lots and lots and lots of white lace. We need to do some things with laces apparently. But that is essentially the sewing room. Um, I'm glad and fortunate to have a whole room to just sewing. And the vast majority of it is historic sewing. So thank you so much for joining me today on the sewing room tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Got to see a little bit more of how I keep things organized and that sort of thing. And I will see you in the next video.